in the mail, MSX came from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with another video. And this one <clears throat> is to mark the very special um, new mini computer release, which is none other than the Atari 400 Mini. Um, uh, I've been waiting to see whether you know some device would come out that would um, celebrate and support the Atari's original 8-bit computers. Um, I've always been a fan of the Atari's. Um, probably would have been one of the first computers I bought if I had have had the money. Um, when they were around, when I, when I was younger. Um, because you've got to remember, these machines came out in 1977. Um, so they've been around, and it's amazing how good a um, you know, technology system they are uh, compared with systems that came out later. And one of the, um, you know, the first machines I saw of an Atari was an Atari 400. And I'm lucky enough to have, now this is the later release, um, 400 because it comes with Star Raiders and an entertainment assortment. So you've got Asteroids, Basketball, Missile Command, uh, Star Raiders, 3D Tic Tac Toe, and um, Space Invaders as well. I don't think I've got all of the, the original games that came with the entertainment pack. All that I know that Star Raiders was one of my um, favourite games. And I actually, um, you know, so, some people obviously. Uh, love the Atari 800 because that's the larger more business-like machine with a full travel keyboard and everything like that but I actually think it's really good that they chose the 400 because it is it's visually more interesting it's practically less functional because it had an absolutely atrocious membrane keyboard so I thought we would celebrate the announcement of the Atari 400 mini and I'll have details down below where um, you can pre-order them in various areas and also to a Facebook group um, that's been made for people who are interested in the 400 mini um, and we'll celebrate that by unboxing my Atari 400 so obviously not my original original from back in the day um, and I didn't actually I couldn't afford to buy one um, until probably about it was about my fourth computer um, and that's when I was working full-time so you're talking uh, probably uh, 85 1985 before I got one of my own and I actually bought a second-hand Atari 400 um, with two disk drives um, and then later on I got an Atari um, 800 XL which is the one that is hidden in the shelves behind me there is my original one so that is definitely my original unit this is another unit that I've picked up later. Uh, this is actually a US one. Um, and it's very handy because there's one Atari 8-bit game I have that only works on the original two models of the Atari, which is the 400 and the 800. And that's none other than the first cartridge release of Demon Attack. And Demon Attack on the original 8-bits is a really good version of the game. So let's open this up. Now, obviously, I'm not going to have all the original packing materials, so just hang on a sec, and I'll just change the angle. Right, back again. Also, you have to bear with me. This is the very first time I've used this camera. Um, it is a proper professional 4K camera, care of my youngest daughter, who is studying media and film. And over the school holidays, because she's remaking the movie Scream, apparently, that's what her and her friends are doing, um, she basically has half the school's video equipment here, so... Um, and people will say my videos aren't in high enough resolution. Well, here you go. You get a 4K unboxing of the Atari 400. So here is um, not very exciting because we're missing packing material. We're missing all the extras. I do have the um, the large box um, Star Raiders that came with this. Uh, we have a big, big thump and power supply. Um, partic particular brick. What have we got? Um, yeah, 15.3 volts, 20 watts. So it's actually a fairly big size uh, power supply. Extricate that out. Obviously, we have a uh, USA plug and just a thing. So you definitely don't want to get them mixed up. 
And this is, uh, this, machine, this machine has not been modified at all, so it just has RF out. And here is, in all its glory, the original Atari 400. So you can see the lovely membrane keyboard, um, which obviously as a young person seeing it for the store on the first time, didn't phase me at all. Um, because most computers around that time had fairly limited keyboards, unless they were really, really expensive. Now even so, when this came out, it was far too much money for what I could afford, so I, um, it never even made my short list, unfortunately. It was on my wanted list, but I never could have had the, the money to buy one of these back in the day. Um, now inside the 400, I'm not going to be able to do this uh, screen inverted. Okay, we open up. We only have the one cartridge slot. Now, in the Atari 800, you have two cartridge slots, and that's why this is the historic reason why Atari cartridges are mostly labeled left cartridge because they're designed to go into the left cartridge slot. The 400 only has the one cartridge slot, so you can't get confused. Um, and the Atari 400, I think, only has 16k of RAM, so it's limited in that respect. And as I said, it has its uh, lovely membrane keyboard. Um, now, along the front, it was designed for games. It has four joystick ports, so you could play um, uh, four players in quite a few different games. Um, a common theme all the way through the Atari bits are these extra, like, function keys that are always System Reset, Option, Select and Start. Um, around the side, we have the... Um, uh, DMA port, so that's for hooking up peripherals such as disk drives and things, now, um, and even the tape player. Um, and it's a chain peripheral port, so you can keep on chaining um, items one after each other. Um, and th they were, you know, because being early devices, they were pretty slow, so the Atari uh, 8 bits have the slowest bit rate on their tape player. Um, it's only 400 board, which is extremely slow, so tape games do take a long time to load, or at least the loader that then loads the accelerated one later. Um, and, but the disk drives were not too bad, they're actually a, a little faster than the Commodore ones. Um, we have a power switch and our power jack. Around the back we have an RF select switch. And there's nothing on the other side. As you can see, just a grill. And, yep, yeah, you just bang a cartridge in there and it works. So I'll pop that aside. So I do have these original documentation that came with it. It's probably not all of them. So it came with Missile Command on cartridge. mold in there from where it was stored previously. Missile, once again, the Atari 8-bit versions, I mean, if you like Atari 2600 games, um, the Atari 8-bit um, graphic system is just that little bit more improved over the Atari 2600, plus you have more memory. Um, it's able to display more sprites, so more player and missiles, um, and you have more control over the uh, graphical background as well. The Atari 2600, uh, you couldn't control the whole background, you have to mirror from left to right, whereas the um, Atari 8 bits you can, and you, ha um, but you, and you have a wide range of colours to select from. And uh, Missile Command is a very well done game on the system. And of course, a really good game is Star Raiders. Um, once, once again, the, um, one, of the, one of the lead games on the system was Star Raiders and um, they made the downported version and released on the Atari 2600 at, uh, a bit later with the special controller so you can because it's a game that requires uh, lots of selection more than you can do with a single joystick and there was a sequel to this called Star Raiders 2 which strictly speaking was um, the game made for the movie The Last Starfighter um, they couldn't call it The Last Starfighter so they called it Star Raiders 2 but it's actually a really good fun game but you basically play um, 
you know, you're trying to beat the um, the armada that's um, coming in, so it's it's a lot more closely related to the uh, to the movie. But the original Star Raiders, a great, um, you know, strategy strategy action uh, space shooting game. I've got the manual to that. So then we have the the entertainer manual. And I said there probably were other manuals that came in this pack. So there's some <coughs> shots there. And I said I'll be most interested to see how this comes out with this new camera because it is the very first time I've used it. And uh, maybe if I save up, I might be able to get my own. Because I'm sure I won't be able to borrow this for very long. And there's actually, you know, there's quite a few things they're going into and what you can get the tape player and and um, I don't think this unit came with the tape player you had to buy that separately but you can see the um, the different games that I was talking about there in the pack so I was just very lucky to find um, it was almost like a barn find finding this system all right so next I have just got a random lot of Atari 8-bit cartridges so you can see what they like most of these are original ones um, and they're actually games that I've had down in the game room playing. Now I normally use a Atari GS, um, GS, anyway, um, which is the more the, the last iteration of the Atari 8 bits because it has composite output, has a, a, a separate built uh, keyboard, and it's got built-in missile command. Um, I usually use that for playing Atari 8 bits in the um, the game area down here. Um, but you have things like Dig Dug. So this is what an original left cartridge looks like. So there's the original colour. Um, and they have uh, cartridge protection down there as well. Um, the sy system was supported by Activision as they supported lots of different systems. So this is Bean Rider. See the size of the cartridges? They are quite small um, in comparison. There's a Vectrex cartridge, so you can see that they are skinnier still than Vectrex cartridges. Uh, funnily enough, they're actually exactly the same size as original Spectre Video cartridges, which is how I designed a case for them. Um, it has a very decent version of Donkey Kong. Very good at getting this to focus, am I? Ha <laughs> ha! Over the little white dot. Once again, playing with new camera, so bear with me. There we go. My daughter put it on autofocus because she knew I wouldn't be able to get manual focus to it. Um, ah, now this is probably the get the Pac-Man uh, that definitely came out with the system because we've got an older uh, label colour again. Um, I actually, oh, I haven't got down from the shelf, there's some intermediate, intermediate ones which have silver labels on them and more match the colour of the box. Yeah, so the, la the last games that were released on cartridge for them came in these cases. So I've got to put it in front of my face to focus. There you go, and they've got a little um, ledge here as well to help you pull the cartridge out and they don't have a protection flap. And there's another Activision one. Uh, the version of River Raid works very well. <coughs> so now that I've got a pile of games out I might as well just show you a quick little bit of gameplay from each of those and um, yeah sign off for this quick video. I hope this um, you've liked this new camera and I haven't messed up the autofocusing too much. I'll have to um, get my daughter to teach me more of the features and maybe borrow it some more. It has a most magnificent um, camera stand um, she actually has a whole heap of lights and things like that too, so maybe I should get more professional with my videos. But anyway, we'll, we'll switch to some gameplays, because all my videos I try and have a bit of gameplay. So let's go and play a couple of Atari 8-bit games, just a quick little game of a couple of these so you can see what it's like. And I'll leave links down below for the Atari 400 Mini pre-order, and I'm sure when that comes out, and so it's only March, you'll see a lot more Atari 8-bit content from me. Right, so here we go with Beam Rider. Um, sort of a good way to start, and it's got pretty good sound. So this one you enter one uh, to four players, and level one to three. And you 
push up to go in. So Beam Rider is a great game to run on a system because it's very evenly ported across them. Oh, I have the wrong button selected on my joystick. So the sound chip, chip on um, the Atari 8 bits is capable of some very good, um, you know, deep sound effects as we're seeing with this game. Two to go. So it's sort of uh, heavily inspired by the arcade game Juno First Beam Runner. Oh, we get our bonus. I'm only going. I'm not going. I can actually play this game for some time, so we're only going to have a quick look. Just so you can get a bit of comparison on sound and graphics capabilities. I said, highly recommend this game on any system. Funnily enough, the Intellivision version actually has some of the best sound for this game. finish this level and then we'll pop another game in. So Beam Runner is great because it has a um, you know difficult curve that goes up as you progress through each level. As you can see we're getting rocks and which you can't shoot. Oops, ah oh, there and made a last second lane change and got killed. Alright well I'll play to the end of the level. So, you know, comparing the other versions, you can see some slightly different, um, you know, graphics fidelity resolution and stuff like that compared to others, but it does a very good job. Alright, we'll move on to another game. We're just having a quick look at it, a few. Right, so next, of course, as if you're not getting the idea recently, I quite like Donkey Kong. <laughs> and this is a pretty decent version. Um, now you, this is where your buttons come in, so we have uh, start, select, option and reset. So um, you know, select an option between, uh, option does the difficulty, select does uh, which one, one or two players and start to play. Now I do remember my start buttons. Up. Oh, and press the, button, the fight button. So as you can see, it's a pretty decent layout. Kong is reversed, just because of space. My joystick's not going up properly. <laughs> okay, I'll try that again. Oops. Imagine it has quite a reasonable rendition of Donkey Kong Tune. And um Oops, I jumped the wrong way. I think it because this joystick is very eight directional. I might do better if I um, used an original. Now, just press the button. We're going to have another go because that was pretty bad. But as you see, it's a pretty good version, and it has the, um, you know, the intro sequences. I have to push the joystick exactly up. That's what the problem is. Oh. So for somebody who plays Donkey Kong so much, I'm not doing a very good job, am I? The 
fire guy is quite aggressive. Don't think these guys climb when they're in this thing. Oh, I just saw one climb. You never know. There we go. Well, you can do it. And as I said, you get the full animation sequences and everything like that. So. You know, they just had a little bit more room, you know, base room on the cartridges. This is not a, a big game um, ROM size, but it has, you know, it's able to do more than what was able to be done on the Atari 2600. Most definitely. Cause As you can see, it's already ramped up the difficulty a little bit there and I'm just trying to show you a few more of the screens if I can so you can see the basic Donkey Kong timings are there and quite well done. So the 7800 version, the 7800 has better vertical resolution, which is why you get uh, a better layout. But unfortunately, that has the only has the Atari 2600's sound chip for compatibility, so I can play 2600 games. Um, and some games could optionally have the sound chip from the Atari 8 bits. Um, there was only really one game that took advantage of that. Yeah, one way. There we go. So if we can get through the the first screen, and I honestly can't remember whether we get the. Um, the ice cream factory one, not the pie factory, ice cream factory. Mm. Ah. Obviously, had a tiring day at work today. My brain is not working, and obviously, this is a complete blind one up play. So, I didn't. Oh, God. Oh God. I do not know how I survived that. Oh. Right. Miraculously. And we get the pie factory. Really hard configuration by the looks of it. No, got me. <laughs> Alright, well, I've played Donkey Kong enough. So let's try our next game. Right, so next we have another one of my absolute favourites, which is River Raid, and it's done very well indeed on the Atari 8 bit.
Right, slight edit there. My start button on this console is extremely dodgy. I'll have to take it apart. But here we go. Particularly like the sound effects on this version. Oh, missed. And almost. Mistake. Right, let's go this way. So obviously, over the Atari 2600 version, you have more background detail. It also has more of the enemies, ones that are missing from the 2600, that are on the other versions, like the Coleco and MSX versions, and Commodore 64 version. You've got those lovely colourful blooms. Thanks. Oops, I missed. Start getting the blue planes now. That's River Raid. Once again, I can play it for some time when I'm not being silly. Um, let's try out some of the other games we showed. Right, so here we go with Pac-Man. This one really shows how much of a step up there is between the Atari 2600 and the Atari Baby. It's an early Atari 8-bit game, but it is just done so well and plays the game so well. So hang on a sec, I will get the... Oh, I don't have to use the start button, so where it's saved. Need some maintenance. So the maze is obviously not quite the correct aspect ratio, but it is the same maze layout. And the ghosts are not going to fall for something as simple as that. But we have really well done sound. Pac-Man looks like Pac-Man. Now I am playing on a um, on a PAL console. I'd just like to point that out so that it does affect the colours a little bit. for a high score. I'm just trying to clear the um, clear the frame. And you even have the ghosts, you know, going back to their original starting position with their eyes too. So it is a very faithful port of the arcade, so there we go, we've finished a frame. And just like the original Pac-Man, it doesn't change, it just gets faster, but we have a different fruit. So as you can see, it's a very good, decent port of the game, very playable, and you know it is actually quite an enjoyable version of Pac-Man, which speaks for a lot of the Atari. 8 bit games. Alright, let's try another one. Right, so next I've got out Defender, um, and this is particularly well done. Although, to play it properly, you sort of need the keyboard spacebar near your big toe. So you can press the, um, the smart button, because <laughs> you need that second button. Um, yeah. 
hang on a sec, I'll just get it started. Here we go. And it's a really good version. Sorry if I'm not talking very much, but defend is very hard. So I managed to do that without using Smart Bomb. Now I'm very lucky to have, well, very lucky to have quite a decent collection of Atari 8-bit cartridges. I don't have all of them, but I have a fair number of them. And it's not that an expensive system to collect for, so... Whoops, oh well. Didn't be last life. And you know, and the scan is reasonably accurate, so you can so you can use it. Ooh, perhaps the UFO coming to get us. Where's our last thing? Phew. Managed to get an extra life there too, which is good. Ah, I wasn't quick enough. I used my hand to do the space bar there. So. See, to do that, you have to take your finger off the controls. But as you see, it's got the particle effects. Um, it's reasonably quick and gives you a decent challenge. One of my absolute favourites on the Atari 8-bits. And um, I'm going to do one more game before we finish off, and just one of the old classic ones. But if there's any other games you would like me to do a specific gameplay of, comment down below and I'll very happily break out the Atari 8-bit and we'll do an extended gaming session of it. And I will be doing some more videos on these. Alright, one more game. Right, so we'll finish off with an absolute classic arcade game and a really good port to the Atari. Number 1982 release, and it's none other than Galaxian. Showing off the colour and detail ability of the Atari 8 bit. Um, get better at my start button now. Obviously, more amusing at best getting it, so we have a little intro there. Now it has slightly primitive sound effects. Getting used to the timing. But it's just a good one for the sheer number of objects and being an early game too. And as you can see, it's not a slouch as far as the speed's concerned. Trying to clear a frame if I can. They move very quickly. Hmm. Unfortunately, you don't see as much cartridge-based homebrew for the Atari Eight Bits. There is uh, there is a couple of titles um, available on Atari Age. There we go, and now of course it gets harder. So this game, um, not only would have, but it did absolutely um, captivate me for hours and hours playing it in my local store. Uh, wishing that I could have one of these at home. <laughs> so this system has a, a tremendous amount of nostalgia for me. So I'm actually really interested to see the games that have come with the uh, Atari 400 Mini. I believe at the time I'm recording this, I haven't actually read this because I've um, been busy the last couple of days, that they've released the first 15, so if I've got that, I'll put that down below. 
and of course I'll be doing more videos on the Atari 400 Minute when it comes out but in the meantime I definitely will be playing some more Atari 8-bit games and um, will um, uh, you know, play a few of the favourite ones from my collection and feel free to request some that I can have a go at as well because some of these games I haven't played for a while. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this bit of a mishmash of a video. I hope the camera in the first section was an improvement over my old one. Obviously, it's not mine. I'm only borrowing it, so I can't have it all the time. And I haven't replaced the cameras that are above these captures, so that's still a bit, you know, we will improve over time. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.